Welcome back to Spoonful of Sugar. Today's episode on disorders of sexual development is hosted by Darby Billing and Elise Kao, who are both third-year medical students at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine, Greenville. This episode marks our last episode for season three of Spoonful of Sugar, but don't worry, we'll be back in no time with season four. Hope you enjoy. Hey, future doctors. Thanks for tuning in to Spoonful of Sugar, a podcast made for medical students by medical students to help the medicine go down. My name is Darby Billing. And Elise Kao. We're third-year medical students at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine, Greenville, and we'll be your hosts today. Today, we're going to discuss disorders of sexual development, including 5 alpha reductase deficiency, Mullerian agenesis, androgen insensitivity, and more. We'll be asking lots of questions, so we encourage you to think about the answers and pause if needed. It can be daunting when looking at all the disorders of sexual development. To simplify our approach, we're going to break down the disorders by genotype, phenotype, and hormone levels. To begin, we're going to discuss the 46XY genotype disorders. Androgen insensitivity syndrome has a 46XY genotype. Do you know what the phenotype of androgen insensitivity is? Great! It's often characterized by a genotypic male with no axillary or pubic hair, who has breast development with cryptoorchid testes and no uterus or upper vagina. Why does androgen insensitivity syndrome occur? You guessed it! The testosterone receptor is deficient. This means the testosterone levels are high. Great job! Let's talk through the phenotype of androgen insensitivity syndrome. Why do patients with androgen insensitivity syndrome have minimal to no axillary or pubic hair? It's due to peripheral androgen res resistance from increased LH. This occurs because of the negative feedback since the testosterone receptor is missing and we have elevated testosterone. Why does breast development occur? Great job! That elevated testosterone is converted to estrogen by aromatase. And why do patients with AIS have an absent uterus and upper vagina with cryptoorchid testes? Great job! Their anti-mullerian hormone is intact and its secretion causes inhibition of a uterus or vagina to form. Our next 46XY genotype disorder of sexual development is characterized by a patient who has ambiguous genitalia until puberty, where they have masculinization. What is this disorder called? You guessed it, 5-alpha reductase deficiency. And what does 5-alpha reductase do? It converts testosterone to DHT. When puberty occurs, the increase in testosterone to normal male adult levels causes masculinization, including a deep voice and the formation of male body hair. These patients have no breast development and have undescended testes with no uterus or vagina development due to intact anti-mullerian hormone secretion. What do you expect the testosterone, estrogen, and LH levels to be in 5-alpha reductase deficiency? Great job! Testosterone is normal, estrogen is normal, and LH can be normal or increased. Now, 5-alpha reductase deficiency and androgen insensitivity syndrome are commonly mixed up, so let's contrast these two conditions. In what condition does breast development occur? You got it, androgen insensitivity syndrome. In androgen insensitivity syndrome, breast development occurs due to the conversion of excess testosterone into estrogen by aromatase, which is typically functional in individuals with AIS. Conversely, in 5-alpha reductase deficiency, breast development does not occur because the enzyme is required to convert testosterone into its more potent form, DHT which plays a role in the development of secondary sex characteristics. Now, what condition has increased testosterone levels? You got it, it's androgen insensitivity syndrome. Testosterone levels are normal in 5-alpha reductase deficiency, while they're elevated in androgen insensitivity syndrome due to the absence of a functional androgen receptor. Now, Let's move on to our 46XX disorder of sexual development. Let's say we have a 15-year-old patient who still hasn't menstruated yet. You do some genetic testing and determine she is 46XX, 
and when you do an ultrasound, the patient has no uterus. What do you think this disorder of sexual development is? Great job, it's Mullerian agenesis. And why does this occur? The paramesonephric duct, also called the Mullerian duct, fails to form during embryological development. This is responsible for internal female genitalia development, including the fallopian tubes, uterus, and upper vagina. Do patients with Mullerian agenesis have pubic hair? Yes, they do. These patients have normal testosterone levels, normal estrogen levels since they do have ovaries, and normal androgen levels. Great job. Our next 46XX disorder of sexual development is aromatase deficiency. What does aromatase do? You got it. Aromatase converts testosterone into estrogen in the ovaries, and it converts androgens into estrogen in adipose tissue. What is the typical presentation of aromatase deficiency? Great, it's ambiguous genitalia as a baby who presents with primary amenorrhea, severe acne, and osteoporosis. On ultrasound, they're likely to have polycystic ovaries. Why do patients with aromatase deficiency have ambiguous external genitalia with clitor clitoromegaly and polycystic ovaries? The external genitalia is due to the increased androgens, since aromatase is needed to convert androgens into estrogen in adipose tissue. And the polycystic ovaries are due to increased gonadotropin levels. And why do patients present with osteoporosis? You got it, because low estrogen causes increased osteoclast activity, which leads to increased bone loss. And what do you expect the estrogen and testosterone levels to be in aromatase deficiency? Estrogen would be low and testosterone will be high since you can't convert testosterone into estrogen. All right, so there's another aromatase deficiency called placental aromatase deficiency. When does this occur? During pregnancy, great. And why does this happen? You got it. It's because the androgens produced by babies can't be made into estrogen. The child will present as previously described in aromatase deficiency, but what happens to the mom? The mom can have virilization since the androgens cross the placenta. Virilization is when you develop muscle bulk, body hair, and a deep voice. Great job. Our next 46XX disorder of sexual development is characterized by an infant who was born with ambiguous genitalia, found to have elevated testosterone, hyponatremia, and hypotension. What disorder of sexual development is this? Great job! It's congenital adrenal hyperplasia. What enzyme is deficient in this disorder? 21-hydroxylase. 21-hydroxylase is responsible for the conversion of progesterone into aldosterone and 17-hydroxyprogesterone into cortisol. As a result, patients have elevated 17-hydroxyprogesterone and decreased cortisol and aldosterone levels. What does an elevated 17-hydroxyprogesterone level result in? You got it. It causes increased testosterone in peripheral tissues. And what effect does elevated testosterone have on the phenotype? Great, it causes virilization. Why do patients with congenital adrenal hyperplasia have hypotension? The decreased aldosterone results in hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, and low blood volume, causing hypotension. Would you expect the renin level to be low, normal, or high? Good job, it would be elevated due to the negative feedback of low aldosterone and hypotension. Let's talk about more sexual development disorders starting with 17-alpha hydroxylase deficiency. 17-alpha hydroxylase converts progesterone into 17-hydroxyprogesterone. This causes there to be more aldosterone and less sex hormones as well as less corticosteroids. 
This disorder can present quite differently depending on the individual's genetic makeup. If someone has an XY chromosome pattern, what can they experience in terms of their genitalia? That's right, ambiguous genitalia, which can be a challenging aspect of this condition. And what about their testes? That's right, they may stay intra-abdominal with a blind ending vagina. In contrast, individuals with an XX chromosomal pattern often lack something crucial related to their sexual development. Can you guess what that is? That's correct. They lack secondary sexual development such as breast development, pubic and underarm hair growth, and hip widening. Now let's delve into the hormonal aspects. In 17-alpha hydroxylase deficiency, there are several hormonal changes happening. What happens to androstenedione dion levels? They decrease. And how about mineral corticoids? Do they increase or decrease? That's right, they increase, learning to certain consequences. One of these consequences involves potassium levels. Do they go up or down in this condition? The potassium levels decrease, but what happens to blood pressure due to the increase in mineral corticoids? It tends to go up. Moreover, this condition affects cortisol production. Is cortisol increased or decreased in individuals with 17-alpha hydroxylase deficiency? It's decreased. Lastly, what's happening at the hormonal level that leads to the observed effects? Think about the role of 17-alpha hydroxylase. What can it no longer do? That's right, it can no longer convert progesterone to 17-hydroxyprogesterone, which disrupts the normal synthesis of sex hormones. So to recap, in 17-alpha hydroxylase deficiency, there are decreased androstenedione dion levels, decreased cortisol levels, and increased mineral corticoid levels causing hypokalemia and hypertension. These hormonal changes underlie the distinctive features of 17-alpha hydroxylase deficiency. Now let's explore another intriguing endocrine disorder called 11-beta hydroxylase deficiency. 11-beta hydroxylase converts deoxycorticosterone to 18-hydroxycorticosterone that eventually becomes aldosterone. It also converts 11-deoxycortisol to cortisol Without 11-beta hydroxylase, there is a decrease in aldosterone as well as a decrease in cortisol. This condition can manifest quite early in life, either during infancy with severe hypertension or in childhood with precocious puberty. In individuals with an XX chromosome pattern, what specific symptoms can you expect to see as a result of this deficiency? That's right, virilization, which can significantly impact their development. What does virilization mean? Great, it's when women develop masculine traits like excessive facial and body hair growth. Now let's delve into the hormonal changes associated with 11-beta hydroxylase deficiency. First, what happens to renin activity? It decreases. And what about aldosterone production? That's right, it also decreases. This is because 11-beta hydroxylase is required to convert deoxycorticosterone to aldosterone. Consequently, there's an increase in another hormone called 11-deoxycorticosterone. 11-deoxycorticosterone is normally converted to corticosterone and eventually aldosterone by 11-beta hydroxylase. It is increased because 11-beta hydroxylase is deficient, preventing this reaction from occurring. How, did this, how does this hormonal imbalance affect potassium levels in the body? It results in decreased potassium levels. And what about blood pressure? Does it go up or down due to the changes in aldosterone and 11-deoxycorticosterone? That's right, it increases, leading to hypertension. Just like 17-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency that we talked about before, hypertension still occurs due to 11-deoxycorticosterone having aldosterone-like activity. Now let's discuss cortisol levels. Do they increase or decrease in individuals with this deficiency? They tend to decrease. Lastly, what's happening at the hormonal level that leads to the observed effects? What can 11-beta hydroxylase no longer do, resulting in increased sex hormones and the virilization seen in XX individuals? That's right, it can no longer convert 11-deoxycortisol to cortisol, leading to these hormonal disruptions and clinical manifestations in 11-beta hydroxylase deficiency. Less cortisol causes virilization due to excess adrenal androgens from elevated ACTH feedback. 
We've discussed sexual development disorders with normal chromosomal makeups. Let's dive into sexual development disorders with abnormal chromosomes. First, let's start with Klinefelter syndrome, a condition with intriguing characteristics. But first, do you remember the karyotype associated with Klinefelter syndrome? That's right, it's 47XXY. Now, individuals with Klinefelter syndrome often display testicular atrophy. But what does that mean exactly? And how does it affect their physical appearance? Well, it means their testes are smaller than usual, and they may present with what condition? That's right, gynecomastia, which is the enlargement of breast tissues in males. Additionally, these individuals tend to have unique body features. Can you name a couple of them? Yes, they're often tall with long extremities and exhibit a more female-like distribution of body hair. Now let's take a closer look at their genetic makeup. Inside their cells, what do we find that's characteristic of Klinefelter syndrome? It's an inactivated X chromosome, known as a bar body. Now what are the underlying causes of the symptoms we've mentioned so far? Think about the role of seminiferous tubules and the hormones involved. That's right. Dysgenesis of the seminiferous tubules leads to decreased in hidden B production, which leads to an increase in which hormone? That's correct, Follic follicle stimulating hormone, known as FSH. Lastly, how about the role of Leydig cells? Abnormal Leydig cell function contributes to hormonal imbalances as well as due to their production of testosterone. What do you think happens to testosterone, LH, and estrogen levels in individuals with Klinefelter syndrome due to this? Yes, you're right, testosterone decreases, LH increases, and estrogen levels also increase. The increased estrogen levels causes the gynecomastia and female-like distribution of body hair. These hormonal disruptions collectively shape the distinctive phenotype seen in individuals with Klinefelter syndrome. Now let's explore a unique genetic condition known as Turner syndrome, characterized by a 45X0 genotype, indicating the partial or, incom or complete absence of one of the X chromosomes. What distinguishes the presentation of this syndrome? That's right, individuals with Turner syndrome often have variable breast development, but there's something unusual about their uterus and vagina. Can you recall what's different? Surprisingly, their uterus and vagina are typically normal, which can be quite unexpected given the other features of the syndrome. However, when we turn our attention to the ovaries, something interesting comes to light. What's the characteristic feature of their ovaries? They are streak ovaries, which means the ovaries contain small amounts of connective tissue with a few to no follicles. Interestingly, some patients with Turner syndrome have retained ovary function. Now moving on to their hair distribution, what can you tell me about their pubic and axillary hair? It's usually normal, which sets it apart from some other conditions because they still have some estrogen production. In terms of associated medical issues, individuals with Turner syndrome can present with specific cardiovascular anomalies. What's one of the cardio cardiac anomalies commonly seen in these individuals? That's correct. They often have a bicuspid aortic valve, which requires close monitoring. They are also at increased risk for a congenital heart defect called coarctation of the aorta. Additionally, Turner syndrome is frequently associated with certain physical traits. Can you name a couple of them? Yes, short stature with a webbed neck and horseshoe kidneys are notable features. The webbed neck in Turner syndrome often occurs due to tenting of the skin over massively dilated jugular lymphatics, also called a cystic hygroma. A cystic hygroma is helpful in the prenatal and newborn diagnosis of Turner syndrome. Now let's discuss the endocrine aspects. How do individuals with Turner syndrome typically present concerning their menstrual cycle and secondary sex characteristics? They often present with primary amenorrhea and a lack of secondary sex characteristics due to the deficiency of which hormone? Right, estrogen. The decrease in estrogen levels results in a hormonal imbalance leading to an increase in which two hormones? It's LH and FSH causing what type of hypogonadism? That's right, hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, which is a hallmark of Turner syndrome. Another disorder that we'll briefly mention 
is a is called double Y males, characterized by a karyotype of 47XYY. Surprisingly, these individuals often go undiagnosed because they typically appear phenotypically normal. However, there are some distinctive characteristics associated with this genetic makeup. First, they tend to be very tall, which can be quite noticeable. Despite the chromosomal anomaly, their fertility is usually unaffected, allowing them to have normal reproductive capabilities. It's interesting how some genetic variations can exist without causing significant clinical symptoms, making double Y males a unique and lesser known phenomenon in human genetics. Our last disorder has a normal chromosomal makeup, however, involves a defect with embryological development. Kalman syndrome is a rare and intricate condition that profoundly affects puberty and reproductive development. Central to this syndrome is the failure in the, in the proper migration of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, known as GnRH, releasing neurons during development. What are the primary consequences of this defective migration in males? That's right, it leads to decreased GnRH levels, setting off a domino effect resulting in decreased levels of which three crucial hormones? It's FSH, LH, and testosterone, ultimately causing aspermia and incomplete puberty. Now let's turn our attention to females. How does this hormonal imbalance manifest in females? Think about their reproductive system. Yes, it leads to amenorrhea, the absence of menstrual cycles, and consequently, infertility. Notably, individuals with Kalman syndrome often lack secondary sexual characteristics. Can you name a couple of these missing features? Correct, they typically have no body hair or breast development, but there's another interesting element to this condition, anosmia, or the inability to smell. What's the underlying reason for this sensory deficit? Think about the developmental connection between GnRH neurons and the olfactory system. That's correct, there is a defective migration of GnRH releasing neurons from the olfactory bulb to the hypothalamic preoptic nuclei. This results in decreased GnRH secretion and underdevelopment of the olfactory bulbs. In essence, Kalman syndrome falls under the category of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. What does this term mean and why, why is it relevant to this condition? This means that there is a decrease in the release of GnRH, LH, FSH, estrogen, and testosterone. Kalman syndrome remains a captivating and complex topic within the realms of endocrinology and reproductive medicine. In today's episode of Spoonful of Sugar, we explored various disorders of sexual development, from androgen insensitivity syndrome to Kalman syndrome. We're going to rapid fire review some questions. Feel free to pause and think about the answers. What is the karyotype associated with Turner syndrome? 45X0. How do individuals with Mullerian agenesis typically present and why does it occur? They present as amenorrheic females with pubic hair, normal hormone levels, and no uterus or upper vagina on ultrasound due to the failure of the paramesonephric or Mullerian duct to form during embryological development. Can you name some physical characteristics commonly seen in Kleinfelter syndrome? and what their typical chromosome pattern is? Individuals have testicular atrophy, gynecomastia, tall stature with long extremities, and a female-like distribution of body hair. They have 47 XXY chromosomes. What enzyme deficiency characterizes 17-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency, and what hormonal changes result from it? 17-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency results in the inability to convert progesterone into cortisol, testosterone, and estrogen. It results in decreased androstenedione levels, decreased cortisol levels, and increased mineral corticoid levels, causing hypokalemia and hypertension. What is the presentation and underlying cause of hypertension in 11-beta-hydroxylase deficiency? Patients with 11-beta-hydroxylase deficiency present with severe hypertension during infancy or precocious puberty in childhood. Patients have hypertension despite hypoaldosteronism because 11-deoxycorticosterone possesses aldosterone-like activity. 
Tell me about a distinctive feature of double Y males, 47XYY. They appear phenotypically normal with normal for, for fertility and have a tall stature. What is the primary cause of Kalman syndrome and how does it impact puberty? Kalman syndrome is due to the failure of the GnRH neurons to migrate through the cruciform plate, resulting in hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. This results in the failure of puberty to occur in anosmia or the inability to smell. Thank you for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe to our podcast. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, visit our website at spoonfulofsugar.org and post them under the link for this episode. Good luck with studying, and remember that if you ever have an SOS moment while studying, Spoonful of Sugar is always here to help the medicine go down.